So hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. Good morning. So to give you just a quick look at this, it's not completely done. This has been a massive project. It's really not that overall big or difficult. It's just been the timing of everything. So last year, it's been, oh my gosh, like a year, year and a half, we actually went ahead and invested in getting some large water tanks, okay? And it's from your favorite place, Tractor Supply. But again, year and a half ago, give me a break, okay? So we have one here and we have another one all the way down at the chicken coop. And the reason we have them where we have them is because the roofing up here is metal and it's also metal down on our chicken coops as well. So we wanted to attach some rain catchments, if you will, just to help us out with water. Uh, we have obviously well water, we have hand pumps, we have all of these things. We do have access to um, basically like a creek or a spring, but it is nice to have backups for backups for backups. So first things first, the first thing you have to realize is we live in Southeast Tennessee and it doesn't matter how flat of an area you think you find, I assure you it's on a slope, except maybe over in Teleco Plains, but <laughs> that's about it. Uh, right there at the foothill base of the, of the Cherokee National Forest. But, so we had to dig all of this out right here. It's a mess right now because, you know, all the digging. We have had some help with this. I've told you this before. We have some gentlemen that uh, we really love to death and they have helped us with a couple of projects like stuff at the house. And they know they're, one is a plumber and one is a, an electrician. So they know how to do a lot more than, than I do. James is pretty handy, but anyway, um, they've helped us out. Uh, but nonetheless, here we have the um, concrete pad. We had to wait until number one, we got the siding of the barn completely done. That was a project that we had to save up for and get the metal for and whatnot. Then we had to attach the guttering, okay? We found out the hard way, as we suspected, the barn is not square. <laughs> Imagine a barn that's probably older than my parents. We actually don't know how old it is, uh, but we are having to give it a lot of facelifts right now. Hopefully we will get a new roof. I'm praying we can get a new roof this year. We really, really desperately need one, guys. We really need one. Um, so we had to get all of that done, and all of that is a work in progress. Well, we went ahead about a year. It's been about a year and a half ago. We went ahead and got these, and they've just been sitting on standby, okay? Uh, and uh, just, you know, because we wanted to, we knew prices were probably going to go up. Things could get more expensive or things could become more unavailable to us. So we sprung for this one and the, and the other one, which is 350 gallons. Uh, and we did, they've just been sitting idle is all they've been doing, okay? Until we then moved into this phase, then we had to attach the guttering. And the reason the guttering is the way that it is is because you think it starts to slope down, it's gonna come down into your rain barrel and then it sloped back up. So that's why you see the kind of the S shape right there. All right, well then once we've moved forward and saved up enough funds, we then moved into having things graded out uh, with our tractor. We've had to work on that quite a bit. You have to work with the weather, which means winter and rain and snow and freezing temperatures that will delay you all day long. We did finally have a concrete pad laid. You can see, you can see the cows have already come over here. So we've got to put fencing up around this, y'all. Nosy cows. Um, and then now we have placed the tank. So we have to finish with the guttering and we're gonna be placing gutter guard uh, in, in there. And you ha basically you have to have screening uh, to help not filter your water, but to keep debris out so it doesn't get into your tanks. So this is new to the farm. We already have the one down at the coop set up. It's a, it's quite a bit small. It's 350 gallons. So, I mean, it's, it's good size, but it's nowhere near this massive thing right here. We can go through a lot of water here on the farm, uh, giving water to our livestock, as you can very well imagine. So we felt something like this was very important in case of an emergency. Somebody asked me if I were to drink this water, how would I filter it? Well, obviously I have water filters. You probably are familiar with one at least that's out there called a Berkey. Um, you know, there's different things that you can use, but this is a work in progress and uh, we're tickled to have it. And uh, we're going to be working with it. If you have something like this, give your suggestions. But like I said, look, they've been checking it out. They'll come over here and they'll nose around on it or, you know, push up against it. You would not think that a cow would be interested in something like this. 
um, but they could be. If they're in a playful mood, they'll do anything. Uh, cows do love to play, believe it or not. So we are gonna have to put some, um, I know the lighting's weird. We're gonna have to put the fencing back up. But right now, overall, this is predominantly done, not com completely done. Um, and, uh, you know, it'll, it'll look better over time, but you know what? Welcome to the farm. So right now this morning, I've had to move the cows out of the field again. Anytime we do work, bring the tractor out, anything like that, we have to make sure that we move the cows over to another paddock and keep them away from what we're doing because they get excited and they'll play, play, play. And I don't want them knocking me or anybody else down today. So they're not aggressive. They just want to play. So I'm taking them over here. They've already had their feed. It's a good workout, by the way. And I'm gonna give them their hay and bring them some water. Hey girls, snacks. I'm finally feeling mostly normal now. It has taken over a good week to get out of this crazy funky town that I've been in. I started feeling better, but you know how you don't necessarily feel yourself and maybe you still have a lot of yuck you, know, you may not be fevering, you may not necessarily be coughing, but you're fatigued. That is the main thing that I noticed that after I start, I know the lighting is weird on me, guys, I can't help it. <laughs> We're out here working. Um, that was the thing that I noticed the most with this is, um, and this could be age, this could be hormones, this could be, like I told you before, I think I worked myself down. I, I really do. I, I stress and worked myself down between the Tennessee tundra that we had. <laughs> um, and then of course, um, let me let me flip around, hang on. Is that better? That's gotta be a little bit better. It's, a, it's tricky sometimes getting out here and working outside with the wind or the sun, you, all these elements, because you, you always end up looking like Funky Town. Um, but the fatigue hit me really hard. It was like, I felt, uh, you know, I went through the motion of being sick and you know, I had a fever and I busted out of that. And then a couple of days of yuck. And then I started to feel better. And then it's like I had this burst. I was like, oh, what? oh my gosh, yeah. And then out of nowhere, it was like I was hit by a freight train. Um, I came sort of out of that yesterday, but for about two to three days, I was so fatigued. Like I couldn't hold my head. Like I, it was a struggle. I didn't want to say much about it then because I was like, what is going on? But I think I wore myself out. I, I'm just gonna be honest with you. I think between the, the horrible weather from about a month ago, the extreme freeze, because anytime a farm goes through a, an extreme weather change like that, all of the preparations that you have to do and the constant work is incredible. I think heavy, heavy freezing temperatures in the winter, I will argue, puts more of a strain on my body, uh, maybe not yours, but mine, than, than 95, 100 degree weather. Um, it just does. It just seems like there's so much more to worry about and do. Um, other than shade, water, shade, water, a fan. You're constantly having to do so much more and the laundry is incredible. So, I think between that uh, and then Vinny got sick, which always stresses me out. I mean, th they're my babies. My owl is gone, my owl broke. My owl, remember I had those two owl eyes? And he's gone, I gotta get something new here. Um, and then Vinny got sick, that broke my heart. Then I was like, yay, we're out of that. And then before I know it, my husband's bringing home uh, Funky Town from work, which is exactly where it came from. And he knows it and everybody knows it. And then I got it. And I think by the time you go through a month of all of this, I never had a recovery period. And that doesn't account for anything else on the farm or family or uh, things that we're trying to do or world events and everything else going on. So this is what I'm saying. Do watch yourself because I noticed not only my temperature never got that high. James was sick, really sick, hardcore for about three days. And then he just came up out of it. Me was a little, was not as hardcore, but it lingered longer. And then I just, guys, I was on the verge of like a collapse there for a day or two. I'm not exaggerating that. So I finally have caught up. I am still taking a few little supplements and I'm juicing and just trying to get some good sleep at night and I'm just slowly working. You know, I know I'm a little flushed right here, but you know, it is what it is. It's cold, but um, be watching yourself guys, okay? Really seriously, truly, madly, deeply. Um, 
ladies, you, we, we harbor so much stress and we do so much. Not that guys don't either. Um, but I'm just telling you, we're made a little bit different. And especially if, you know, if you're getting a little bit, you know, if Perry is becoming your friend out there, you know, you know, your body's different. Our bodies are different. Doesn't mean we're less capable. It's just, we're different. And we have a lot more to worry about because we have a lot more life experience. You know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, we were just stupid, <laughs> young and dumb, right? There's a lot to be said about that. But when you, you know, once you get to the point where you could basically be a mammal, I'm not a mammal and that's not in the works yet, but I'm just saying we think about things differently. We worry about things differently and um, you can wear yourself flat out. So just, I know you know this, I know my gals know this, but take it from me. Um, you know, we just got to watch ourselves. I want you safe and healthy. I know. Let's go finish the chores so Tara can sit down for just a few minutes and drink some water. I will. <laughs> So I'm gonna keep walking. If the lighting gets weird, I'm sorry. It's easier for me to hold my camera with my left hand than it is my right hand. I know that's strange, I'm right-handed. But I think today might be the last day. Might, might be the last day that I bottle feed my babies. They really don't need them anymore. I mean, we are way up there. Um, and uh, they just, they're just so sweet. Those six bottle babies are just awesome. So I'm really looking forward to this warm up. Uh, I am opening up my garden down here area um, and opening up that whole field for them to graze on. So I went and bought new, James went and bought new locks yesterday so we can finish screening on the gate and everything so nobody sneaks out. You know, little sneaky varmints and Enoli doesn't get out either. Um, so we're doing that so they can finish eating off the garden from last year. I never, I haven't graded it down or done anything to it. I'm gonna let them have it. So I held off on that. Um, I wish they'd already been out there, but like I said, weather and sickness dictates a lot on a farm. So th hopefully that's gonna be happening today or tomorrow, but I'm hoping to get the babies out. It's time to start introducing um, everybody so far is getting along. I mean, they hear each other and see each other, but some of them are not actually in the same vicinity. And uh, you gotta be careful with the little, little babies, especially the bottle babies, because see, they don't have a mama there that's bonded to them. I'm their mama. So it's always a slow intro. You may do it differently. That's fine and never have a problem. I just don't want to jinx myself. And, uh, but today I'm thinking, I think we're going to stop because they love hay and they love their grain and they're drinking out of the buckets, their fresh buckets every day. Um, they really don't need the bottles anymore. Uh, we are well beyond 12 weeks. If you're going to ask me, a lot of people bottle feed their babies up to eight weeks. Um, then some are a little bit more, uh, committed and, go to 12 weeks. I've actually gone quite a bit beyond that, but they're down to one bottle a day. And like today, it was just a half a bottle. So it's just like they just get a little ba ba just to let them know mama loves them, you know? But I think we are just about there and uh, time flies. It really, really does. It's amazing how quickly time is moving. Hey buddy, what are you doing? You checking everything out, Cochise? Good morning, Vinny. Are you getting every single morsel, Vinny? You're doing so good, buddy. Yes, you are. Hi, sweethearts. Get every morsel. <laughs> Tweety, did you figure it out? I think Tweety has made friends with Dump Truck here. And Dump Truck has dumped over, ah! Oh, dumped over the trash can. And look, she's so trashy. Look at her all up in there. I'm just gonna let her do it, y'all. I'm just gonna let her, I'm just gonna let her be in the trash can for till I, I'm done. I'm just gonna let her eat all she wants. Okay, everybody, party is over. Tweety, come on. Come on, Tweety. Did you get your fill? You made a mess, you messy girl. All right, let me pick it up. My goodness, you ate the whole trash can. Look how much she ate, y'all. <laughs> Tweety, you nuthead. Okay. Are we done with bottles, you think? Oh, don't knock my glasses off. Pinto, hi, Bucky. Oh, are we done with Baba's? Huh? Are we, baby? You 
guys are big kids now. Big kids. All right, guys. So we are much later in the evening. Sun is about to set. The water tank project is officially done. We are exhausted. It's been a lot of running and planning. And I'm worn out. I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I'm, I, may have, I, may, I need a day off. What do you think? That doesn't exist in this world. What am I talking about? <laughs> All right, so we've got that in place, all hooked up. We had to put fencing up, um, and it's just cut fencing with the posts because, as you saw this morning, the cows were rubbing up against it, and we didn't want them rubbing up against it. We didn't want them knocking off anything. That's always a possibility with cows. They're so big and strong. So this is what we're looking like right now, and that's how we've got... <laughs> There's our snaky looking uh, gutters. Uh, it's so funny. My grandparents, I found on a census, uh, they lived on a road. It's not called this road now, but they called it Snaky Road because it was so curvy. And I asked my Nana, I said, where in the Dickens is Snaky Road? She said, oh, Tara, that's what they used to call it back in the old days because of all the curves. So we've got a snaky gutter. <laughs> but should work we're excited to get this behind us this is a major milestone for us here on this homestead this is a year and a half in the making y'all seriously it has taken almost a year and a half to get this done but with weather and things and family and projects and the money that you need this is how long it takes sometimes now we do have screening also so that when the water comes in from the gutter it is, it's not filtered, but any debris and things like that, mosquitoes are hopefully more kept out of going into the tank. So that there is that. I can't get in there. I'm not gonna, I know you don't expect me to get in there. Uh, not right now. Uh, and show you, but that, that you do want to have that element uh, with your water tanks or your catchments. And uh, so this is good, but this is going to help us tremendously with watering our animals. So we're supposed to start getting rain, I think tomorrow afternoon. And one good gully washer uh, could add a lot of water to our tanks. And that's just going to be great for our farm. Such, such a milestone. So now we have a ton of cleanup all around the barn that we have to do. A project like this calls for a massive cleanup day after it's done because of all the materials that you have to use. I mean, we had to use all of this alone just for everybody to walk on out there. Uh, so that they wouldn't sink in the mud. I know I said that in a video probably a month or three ago, something like that. But this is what the, what we're going to be working on here before we get heavy into spring is majorly cleaning up around the homestead, the barn, the house, getting everything in order. You girls okay? You glad to be back over in your favorite spot? They're eating their hay. Well, guys, I'm going to wrap this video up. We're going to close everything down. And I'm going to chill tonight. We have worked so hard. And our friends helped us and they worked so hard. A lot of organizing any projects that you have guys just keep just keep plugging away okay just keep plugging away try not to get discouraged as far as your timelines it's easy to do that because we want things now you know we're like TikTok. we want you know we think that society and, and even us to a degree we want things now we want things done now and it doesn't work that way and when you come into this lifestyle you really do step back to slowing it down if you don't slow down believe me the homesteading lifestyle is absolutely going to slow everything down for you because you're not working on your timeline anymore remember man plans god laughs i mean i would have loved to have had this done a year ago but it didn't work out that way until now so this is when the lord wanted it done so this is when we got it done all right guys we'll keep you posted on everything we appreciate you being here more videos on the way might take a day off from filming just work around the barn and farm and put down the phone and relax. We'll see. I go with the flow. I just go with however I feel and with the flow. But keep preparing out there, guys. A lot going on. Just keep pressing forward. I appreciate you so much. Y'all take care out there. Godspeed. God bless. And guys, I'll see you on the next video. Is he good? Is he good, honey? Yes, ma'am. It's good.